So I'm going to have each of them introduce themselves and uh, say which program that they teach for currently, and then one of their favorite parts of teaching with the Recall. My name is Bonnie Harris. I'm a graduate of the IMC program in 2007, and I teach 636 Capstone, which is the course at the very end of the IMC program. And probably my favorite thing about the class that I teach is that I, got, I get to kind of launch people back into their careers, and that's really fun. Learning about how they're going to use their IMC degree as they move forward. I'm Dan DiPiazzo, and I teach in the data marketing program. I'm also a graduate of the program. I uh, primarily teach uh, the introduction course, uh, DMC 660, and also uh, 662, which is message customization. And um, I really enjoy being on the opposite end, too, which is starting people um, into the program and really helping them get over maybe any trepidation they have about fact that this is going to be um, all about data. It is all about data, but it's really about data marketing communication. So it's the marketing communications piece that's really important as well. Um, and, and just helping students to, to ease into the program and, and, and get going. My name is Keith Quisenberry, and I teach in the digital marketing communications program. I'm a graduate of the IMC program in 2011. Um, I teach the uh, intro to digital marketing communications class, and I teach the capstone um, in the same program. So I get to see, actually introduce students to mm -hmm. the entire program, and then I get to see how far they progress at the end of the program, which is uh, pretty amazing. Um, so I really enjoy that. And um, just, I also enjoy the, the you know, the, the, the learning is so practically focused on, you know, how do you actually apply these things in the business world to really prepare you for the positions you want once you graduate? All right, thank you all. Um, so if we, if you have any questions and you would like to unmute yourself, you can absolutely ask that way. Or if you want to pop in the chat, whatever you're, uh, you're most comfortable with, but we'll go ahead and get started with a question by our audience first. Any specific questions? Well, um, I will go ahead and ask a couple frequently asked questions that we hear. Um, so I'll start with Bonnie. Um, one of the most uh, frequently asked questions about the IMC program is that um, they want to know what the capstone is like and um, how it's going to help them in their career progressing forward. Sure. Well, the capstone is a different type of program in that at the end of the courses, you're asked to take all of the information, all of the learning that you've gained and apply it to creating a real plan. And in IMC, there are two different courses, one where you get to bring in your own client and another where their client is assigned. But really, for most students who come into the program, they're either at the beginning of their career or earlier on or their mid-career, and they really haven't had the opportunity to create a full-fledged IMC plan with goals, strategies, components, measurement in there. And so not only do they get their actual campaign document that they can show, and I've had students who bring that to an interview and show them the work, they have that experience of seeing an entire campaign and planning in that entire campaign from the beginning to the end, which you normally wouldn't get in at that stage in their career. So I think that and then the practical application of their learnings is, is really what Capstone is all about. Wonderful. So next I'm going to ask Deanne to explain a little bit about the data marketing side and what really makes it different from an, a regular IMC program. And um, how much do you say an understanding of Excel is beneficial for it? Yeah, um, well, I'll, I'll start by saying I am math averse. I, I hate math. I managed to get all the way through my undergrad taking only one math course. Um, and so, you know, if I, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Uh, but I think, you know, it's been really neat during the integrate 
this week hearing pretty much all the sessions, all the speakers talk about the importance of data. And, um, and that's people talking about social media, talking about PR, advertising, whatever. Um, it all comes back to data. Um, and we need to care about data because our bosses care about data. Um, and, you know, I've worked in lots of different environments, um, you know, big companies, small companies, private, public agencies, you know, consulting, I'm about to go into a nonprofit. Um, all of them care about data at some level, whether it's a stock price or whether it's ticket sales or whether it's um, donors or whatever. So I think having a command of that and an understanding um, how to apply data to sharpen your marketing communications is what the program's about. It's not about data science. We're not um, sitting there doing all the number crunching and all the statistical analysis. You'll get a taste of that and, and why that's important. But the most important thing is how do you derive insight from that? And then how do you apply that into your communication? And that's what really differentiates the program here, I think. Great. All right. And then Keith, I'm going to um, ask you to explain a little bit about the uh, certifications that are included in the digital program. It's definitely one of our, our big selling points for the digital uh, marketing communications program and how we kind of um, integrate that into the curriculum of the classes. Yeah. So for in any job you get in digital marketing communications, um, uh, you know, the main components of the course, we're going to focus on strategy. Strategy is, is important. You can't just hop on Twitter and start randomly doing things and expect business results. So um, it's definitely grounded in that. But at the same time, your job is going to have to be working with technology. Like there's certain platforms you need to know. So we have the professional certifications um, built into the courses so that not only do you learn a strategy, but you're also familiar with the, 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 some of the types of software you'll be using in your, in your job. Um, and as a bonus, you, you actually get a, a professional certification that's recognized in the industry that you can add to your, your LinkedIn and your resume and you get a badge. Um, so it's this extra component that's going to be recognized in the industry when you, when you go out and, and search for jobs. Like, oh, we don't have to train them on Hootsuite because you know, they have a certification, they can come in and just start running our social media because they kind of know that technology and it's combined with what we teach you about. So, um, you know, we, some of the certifications um, in, uh, like we have the uh, Google Analytics certification, you're going to learn about um, web metrics and SEO, you should know Google Analytics and that's, that comes along with it. Absolutely. So this is going to be a question um, that's for anyone to answer, so any of you can answer this one, but um, when it comes to working full-time and being enrolled into the program, how do you balance that, or how did you balance that, rather, and, um, you know, what are some ways to really emphasize time management within your own personal life to make sure that you can balance both? Well, I'll take a crack at it to begin because I was running a business and took the program at the same time and was had a part time job writing freelance. <laughs> so I and, and I didn't plan it that way, obviously. But I think that the first thing I'm going to kind of address this question in a little bit of a different fashion because what I see a lot is that people who come into our program, and maybe you guys see this too, are very much high performance. Mm -hmm. They're often perfectionists. Mm -hmm. And the best thing that students can do is be kind to themselves in the beginning because I see them come in with so much stress and pressure on themselves. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you have to really find the schedule that works for you. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out in your individual life when the right time is to study, and you can't do that until you've really been through a class. That's why we have 610 in the introductory classes. So I think there's, there's this pressure to get a high grade and all of that. And I would say if, if someone can just kind of be a little kinder to themselves, mm -hmm. understand that you have to go through it to figure out what works for you in the flow. And then um, it really gets easier as you go on. So that's what I would say. I'm sure these, yeah. these guys have a lot to add to that. Well, and I think one of the good things about the program, all of the programs and the way they're structured, is um, there's, there's a cadence that you have repeated throughout all of your courses. So once you get the hang of that, 
Um, that you have discussions on certain days, that your assignments are due on certain days. Um, and you also get all the materials up front. So you have the lessons, you have the assignments, you know what's coming up and you can plan. So um, that's very helpful if you, if you have to travel, if you know that you have something important coming up at work or a personal commitment or anything, you can kind of work ahead. You can, you can um, arrange it to some degree around your schedule. Um, it's not that you have to be in a classroom every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Um, so there's a lot of benefit and flexibility in that. Yeah, and I, I just ended up, uh, you know, when I first started the program, I, I was trying to work late at night to get things done, and then I realized this isn't good for me. So I ended up, I ended up getting up early, and then I just got in this rhythm of I would get up early, and I would have like an hour or two before anything else happens in my household. And that's when I would work on my schoolwork. Um, and, you know, and, and different students is different, you know, some can do it at lunch or some can do it at, late at night. And, and you just have to figure out what that is. And then you just get in that regular schedule of every day for those, that, that's what I'm gonna work on this. Um, and then you get in the flow of like knowing when you're gonna start writing your discussion to meet the deadline and when you're gonna do your posts and when you're gonna write your paper and, and kind of review it and those kind of things. So you just kind of have to search for those extra times when um, it's gonna fit within your life. But it's, it's definitely the flexibility makes it unique that you can make that schedule unique to your current, your actual situation. And it is a challenge. I mean, it's, it's a stretch and it's one of those things that I had to tell myself along the way, you know, just, yes, this is a bit of a, of a, of a burden now. It's, a, you know, I'm stretching myself. I might rather just, you know, sit back and watch a baseball game on Sunday afternoon, but I got to do an assignment. Um, but you're investing in yourself and your career. So it, it's a relatively short term in life, you know, a uh, short period. So um, it, it's worth the extra effort. I think, Absolutely. I think it's interesting. Um, from a recruitment standpoint, uh, a lot of our students do have, they come from many different backgrounds as well. So I do get a question oftentimes, you know, do I need a certain level of experience for this program or should I have a certain background where the, um, you know, I'm coming from specific marketing background or uh, journalism. And uh, we get that question a lot, but uh, we, we are very open to whatever background you're coming from. So um, we have students right now that come from a psychology background and that can be beneficial to marketing as we know. Um, there's psychology behind everything and um, obviously marketing is, is definitely, um, in, it, it utilizes psychology in many different ways. Um, some people have a scientific background, and obviously that can be incredibly beneficial in like a data perspective so that you have a better understanding that way. But um, we're not looking for a specific background. We're not looking for um, a certain level of experience. We just want to know, you know, what makes you interested in our program and how can we help you get to what that next level is for you professionally. Um, that's definitely something that we we want to know about. And, you know, once it goes to the application process, we do ask for a statement of purpose, which we, we do want to see, um, you know, why WVU and why our program, because we, we obviously know we have an incredible program here with a lot of uh, great attributes to it, but uh, we like to know how we can help you succeed to the next level. Um, one thing that we also really take pride in is that our all of our faculty is adjunct because they are currently working in the industry. And that's something that is a huge selling point for us because we want you to know that the people who are helping you learn every single day know what's happening in the industry and they are current and up to date on the topics and, and how to use what you're learning every single day in your careers. So I'd like for each of you just to talk a little bit about what you're currently, where you work currently and um, how you utilize what you teach in every single day. Keith, you wanna go first start. this time? Oh, well, you're gonna ask me first. <laughs> yes. I'm actually a full-time academic now. Oh, <laughs> that's how you got to set me up. Uh, no, okay. I, I worked in advertising for 17 years. Um, I was a copywriter and a creative director and um, made the transition to, to academics and I, I mm -hmm. focus, but my, my specialty is, is digital marketing, communication, social media marketing. Um, 
And, you know, I, so I have that industry background and mindset. Um, and I, and I, I like to kind of really like, yes, teach the, teach the principles and the concepts and the theories that you get in a regular academic setting. But the important part of it is how does it, where does the rubber hit the road and how does that actually make a difference in the business? Um, there's, we, this, weekend at the conference, there's been a lot of talk about translating and speaking the language mm -hmm. of your bosses. And your bosses are like, they have, you know, they have things that they're held accountable for, sales, market share, you know, whatever it is. So you have to, you're always, uh, I try to emphasize in the class, you're not, it's not just, your objective isn't open a TikTok, TikTok account. Your objective is your boss needs to reach a younger demographic to increase sales because the sales were dipping last year. So you need to be able to translate that into, okay, one strategy and tactic we're gonna use is open, open the TikTok account, but it's not just to open the TikTok account, it's to build back. And then how do we build metrics to measure back to that it is helping to increase and add to that bottom line. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I set you up there. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but to be fair, you did just transition. <laughs> well, I'm transitioning too. Um, <laughs> That's okay. Um, but uh, currently, I'm the chief marketing officer for um, a pet retailer um, in Louisville, Kentucky. But I am soon to be uh, CMO for the Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta. So, um, so my background: I started in journalism. Um, moved into PR, did that, you know, strictly for about 10 or 12 years, um, and then kind of morphed into broader marketing uh, categories, and now, you know, kind of lead all, all aspects of marketing for, for the organizations I've been in. So um, that's fun because I get to see kind of how all the pieces work together, um, and the evolution of that over time, just, um, you know, as I've been doing it, just, you know, how we shifted from you know, where, where we used to not have anything in social media, and it was all about the mass media advertising and, um, and, and moving that along and, um, and just trying to stay ahead of that wave is, is really interesting. How much of an impact do you think um, data and data marketing, having a better understanding and teaching data marketing has on, you know, where marketing is heading and what you do every day? Yeah, it's been huge uh, for me. Uh, it's one of the reasons I gravitated to this program is just because I could see that so much, you know, it used to be just like we were graded on creativity and, oh, well, that was a fun campaign and that was neat. And we would spend, you know, literally millions of dollars, you know, making up some bus and driving it around the country. And it's like, okay, well, that was fun. But uh, now we're much more metric driven. It's much more about, um, okay, well, if, if we invest in this, is this going to get us a better return than this? Um, and how do we um, impact our customers directly? And we can, we have the tools now where we can see literally by the hour sales coming in and be able to understand, you know, if I push this button, does this happen or does it not happen? And boy, we better move fast to, to change it. So, um, so at least understanding the components of data is important. Again, not everybody's going to be the, the the data scientist who really crunches all the numbers, but once the numbers are crunched, how do you translate that into some kind of action? Great. I think you make a really good point, and I think that um, the point about the adjuncts that we have is not necessarily just that we're all kind of in the real world, but mm -hmm. that we have a really broad range of backgrounds. and. You know, as you were talking, I was thinking about marketing, which typically everyone thinks of marketing as this creative thing, and it's really it hasn't been viewed as a science. And now, because it's so data driven, it really is more of a science. And so, having academics, people like Keith in there, who are bringing some of the research that's being done, mm -hmm. and there's so much more research being done now in the science mm -hmm. of marketing. So, we do have academics as adjuncts, but they bring that perspective to us, and that's really important. Um, I came out of the technology industry, so I never grew up through the agency or creative or anything like that. I worked in tech um, in Silicon Valley in California through the whole dot com and the eventual dot bomb, which is mm -hmm. when I left. Um, and so I was in sales and marketing and I moved into 
running my own marketing agency at a time when technology and websites and all of that were really becoming important, but people were afraid of it in marketing. So I, I took the program to get a foundation in marketing because I really had just on the job experience. And so for the last 20 years, I have done IMC. That's what I learned. That's what I practiced with my clients. I work mainly with technology clients in healthcare that from startups to kind of mid-tier that are, um, you know, rapidly growing. And our group is small, um, but we're very nimble. And so we don't come in with a methodology like a lot of marketing agencies do. We come in with the IMC mm -hmm. methodology that I learned here and we apply it to what they need at the time. And so that's been really exciting. I've done some consumer things as well and, you know, done the kind of bus thing, yeah, which is it. fun. And I drove, yeah, a, I I drove a giant, I drove a giant grocery cart that had this giant <laughs> engine on it down the street one time. I mean, we'll never stop doing those yeah. kinds of things because they are the fun stuff. But I, you know, coming out of tech, I feel like the, the data side of it is so much fun for me and it's kind of a come full circle. I always joke that I tried to get out of tech and I, I can't ever no, escape you can't. it because of none of us can anymore. So, yeah. Did that answer all the questions? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I your your examples of driving the, the fun thing. <laughs> I, just just because we measure things now and, and we mm -hmm. track it back to like business objectives doesn't mean we don't have fun anymore. There right. is still a lot of innovation creativity uh -huh. involved in marketing. Um, that made me remind me of a case study when the one agency I worked for, we uh, we had a, it was a B two B client, and everyone's like, "Oh, you can't have fun with B two B." But it was uh, Sandy. Uh, uh, the company made uh, disinfectant wipes that restaurants use to, to wipe mm -hmm. tables down, get mm -hmm. them ready for the next customer to come in. And they were going to Chicago for the biggest, the big restaurant association convention. And their task for us was we want to land one major account, like a, a big franchise restaurant that's going to use our product. And we, we came up with this wild idea. It, it relied heavily on social media where we created a fake protest group of germs that were protesting Sani, uh, Sani Professional was the product. And we actually had costumes made up and, and some of my colleagues were in Chicago dressed as germs with protest signs. <laughs> and then we made up um, fake social media accounts for them all. And I was writing the tweets like E. coli uh -huh. and like, you know, <laughs> um, and we got all this press and everything. And at the end, they landed two accounts. Wow. Yeah. Wow. They landed, um, I think it was Burger King and Dairy Queen. Wow. Um, and I think you make such a good point Sorry. that, you know, you just kind of casually mentioned landing all this press. And one of the things that data is so great for is that in, I've done a lot of kind of the media relations <laughs> side of it, because a lot of my clients don't have the budgets to do ads, but we never had enough depth and data to really measure what yeah. media relations and public relations placements were doing. And we can now. And right. so those types right. of campaigns, we can tie it back and say, not only to the end result, but also there are all those little mini conversions that happen to that story right. is one thing that I love. But if you do like fake protests, I'm just going to throw this aside <laughs> because there's something, if you haven't heard of birds aren't real. Oh, yes. yes it's I've the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's a, it's a guy who created a fake kind of protest <laughs> right, type really. thing and it's gone all over the place. So, wow. yeah, I was just looking at that. The other yeah, day. yeah, yeah. It's pretty it's, funny. It's, yeah. It wasn't germs, but I'm sure the doctors would have loved that. So we touched a little bit on the IMC capstone, um, but it does differ from program to program. So if uh, Dan and Keith, if you could just mention or talk a little bit about what the capstone looks like in both of your programs as well, and kind of what to expect, um, you know, for an end product and, and what that process looks like. Yeah, and the data program, and, and really, you know, the capstone in every course is, is kind of the, the summation of everything. But in the right. data program, we focus on a particular client throughout the, the entire process. So you're really taking everything you've learned along the way and now applying it to a real world example of the company. Um, and, and so, you know, that kind of leads up to a final presentation as if you were presenting to the CMO of that company. 
um, and bringing all these pieces together, research and creative and, and budgeting and everything else. So, um, so it's, it's, you know, kind of brings it all together. Mm -hmm. What are some, um, some pieces of the, uh, the capstone, like um, Excel spreadsheets? Um, how does it differ? Because IMC is a little bit of everything within the entire marketing campaign. And what are some pieces that data really focuses on? The, the big focus in our capstone, a lot of this research, um, the students actually launch, um, a, you know, create a survey and, and, and put it out. Um, and, you know, a lot of times we'll get, you know, the faculty and former students and others get invited to, to participate. But um, so you actually get to see how a survey really deploys and, and analyze those results. Uh, you do a budget, you do a media plan. So all those things are, are pretty data driven. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, this is not trigonometry. Right. You know, it's right. it's business math. It's it's um, making sure that your numbers add up. If you've got a million dollar budget, how are you going to allocate a million dollars? And, um, and, and then putting that all together in a package that that makes sense um, against your your strategy and then how you're going to bring that to I think Bonnie should go first because mine's kind of a focused version of, of what her oh, capstone she, is. Yes. She went. Oh, we did talk about Oh, you the, did talk about the your IMC capstone. capstone at the beginning, oh, right. just a little You're bit. Right. It was yeah. in the context of another question. Right. Okay. But I will say to, to reinforce what you had to say, it is every single piece of an mm -hmm. IMC campaign. So right. we start with the background, we go to the goals and objectives, mm -hmm. the primary overall strategies, and then we break down the strategies per component. And then at the end is our measurement section, which always feels a little bit like it should be the whole thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? It should be the structure of it, but that's kind of how it's, yes. that's sort of the, the outline of that. That coming. I haven't actually seen a data capstone. I should probably yeah. get one yeah. and look at it. It'd be interesting. So for the digital marketing communications capstone, um, it's the context is is if you worked for a digital marketing agency and a, and a client came to hire you to do mm -hmm. digital marketing. So um, anything that's considered digital marketing comes underneath that. It's it's not traditional advertising and, and other things. So it would be you know starting with a website and email campaign, social media, display ads, pay-per-click, SEO, all those things that are specifically digital. And um, the, the, the students get to choose what client they want to work on. And, and sometimes it's from personal interest, but other, other times it's like they, they use the company that they currently work for. Um, and then you create, you know, you know okay, what, what problem are we trying to solve? A business problem. It's, it's not a digital marketing problem, it's a business problem. Then you determine how can digital marketing help solve it, the larger business problem. And you come up with strategies and example, uh, example pieces of communication, write, in, write an email, do a display ad. You can, um, I, it, there, the flexibility, it, every capstone looks different because each client that the student works on has a new problem and, and demands different strategies and tactics. Um, so you rely a lot, and, and also there's personal interest. So um, if a student's really interested in, in video, they can choose a client and they can focus their capstone on a lot of video content. Mm -hmm. But other students maybe aren't comfortable with that and they're more focused on social media and other forms of social media and they can include that in their plan. So there's a lot of customization, but at the end, I mean, you have a piece that you could go and show prospective employers that, you know, I can put a, a cohesive plan together. Absolutely. And I think that's um, definitely the key takeaway from the capstone is that you build your knowledge and the practice the entire time that you're in the program. I think that was for myself going through the program as an alumni. Now um, I look back and really see how each course built on itself and helped me build that knowledge all the way up to the capstone. And, you know, coming into the program and doing the intro course and hearing about the capstone at first, I was like, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. This is a lot. How am I going to write an entire marketing campaign? But then you see all the pieces of the puzzle really come together. And it's very powerful because you see just how much you learn and you grow as a marketer. 
Um, so I saw that we had one person join in. So welcome, Lynette. And if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself. Um, and just, you know, what we have here is one instructor from each program. Um, so if you're if you're teetering between one of the other, you can absolutely ask, uh, you know, a specific program question or just a general question at all. But welcome and let us know if you have any questions. You can also put it in the chat if you'd like. Any questions specifically from anyone? All right, so um, I think the next question I'm gonna ask is um, basically, what do you think is the most powerful, um, I guess the most, the, the most powerful thing that you feel our program helps uh, and I, I guess uh, progress our students forward from. So what, what does our program from other programs really emphasize and help our students grow and be able to move forward after they're done? And that's from whether you've had students that you watch progress and then you know watch their career afterwards, if you have like a testimony for that, or um, is there a specific class that really meant so much to you that helped you grow and learn, obviously besides the capstone. <laughs> So anyone can answer that one. Well, I'll start. Okay. Um, I work a lot in digital commerce where we talk about the difference between the multi-channel and omni-channel approach. Some people call it a total experience or customer experience. And in within the marketing communications world, we're still incredibly siloed. And so many programs and campaigns that are running both internally and that agencies are running are multi-channel, meaning that they are running social media and email and website campaigns and all of that, but they're running them concurrently without any synergy between those channels. And so I think that, and, and I see this in programs as well, mm -hmm. some of the other programs that I've, I've seen, but with ours, you really learn how to run an integrated marketing communications campaign, which those campaigns that truly run in an integrated fashion have metrics that blow any other campaigns up out of the water. And when I present at conferences of some of the campaigns we do, where we have open rates on email of 30, 40% on a regular basis, you know, things like that, it shows how strong the integration really is, or it's, you know, we're increasingly calling it the omni-channel and omnipresent type of campaign. So one of the things that has been really unique about WBU's program, and again, because we're this, there were only two that were online and when I took it, one was at another university and one was here, is that we really do teach integration. So students who lead this program understand how to do that, which is probably, I don't know, what do you guys think? What percentage of marketers actually understand how to do integration? Maybe five? Yeah, yeah. I was, that's actually what I was going to point out. Uh -huh. Like when I was working, like I knew advertising and I knew how to do ads and we created integrated integrated campaigns, but it was like the PR department, we come up with the idea, we do our ads and then the PR department does their thing and the interactive department does their thing. And it was, they, they were always just separate and afterthoughts and then you know, pull, it, pull it together. Mm -hmm. And I worked with a lot of PR people, but I had no idea what PR was and what they actually did mm -hmm. until I took the PR class and I'm like, oh, this is what they do. And then just having an understanding of what they do and how PR works, even if I'm not in a PR position, I can create a better integrated campaign. Yeah. And I will say, even though I'm here to advocate for the data program, um, <laughs> you know, in my in my my real life role as a CMO, that's critically important. I mean, we we just we can't do anything that isn't integrated because you know each piece individually is just not gonna you know, the, the sum, you know, or the, you know, the sum is greater than the whatever it is of its parts. Um, but, um, but, you know, I think that's really important. And, um, and so I think that's great. I'll say on the data program too, I think, you know, it is also a very unique program. And as we've talked about it, it's really about, um, you know, even, even in another way, how do you take these things and, and connect it into the business and, and you know, Gain credibility with the CFO, the CEO, um, and, and be able to, to advocate for marketing in a way that enables you to do some of those integrated programs. So it really all fits together very well. And I think too that um, 
marketing campaigns are changing because they're not linear anymore. They're really more like you know, like feedback loops that continuously improve right. and they're much more iterative and data informs every touch point right. in those campaigns. So it's really the foundation right. that creates great integration because you know out of social we're informed of something that we then use in, in PR right. and that kind of thing too. So it's cool that data science is in, is really growing as rapidly as it can because it, it provides like I said the foundation and the fuel mm -hmm. for the campaigns that I run. Yeah. Well, one of the big buzzwords, and I hate buzzwords, but I find myself using it all the time is optimization. Right. And that's yeah. really what we're doing. It's like this constant, mm -hmm. you know, refinement. It's constantly fine tuning. You, you get one piece of data that says, well, uh, this isn't quite working as well mm -hmm. here, but this is working better. And, um, you know, this ad format works better or this, this campaign is, you know, and, and you're just continually, you know, tinkering with the dials, you know, the way I always think of it. Right. So we do have a question. Um, Lynette says, I've been in communications field since 1999 and it's definitely changing rapidly more now. I feel like whatever I read up now could be obsolete in six months. Mm, true. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> I would love to hear about how the program has a foundation that I won't be obsolete a year after I'm done. And that is a wonderful question. Oh, I have a student perspective on that because I graduated from the program this is, yeah, this tells you. So I graduated from the program in 2011 um, and, and things have changed a lot, mm -hmm. right? And we and back then we didn't even have a, a, a separate social media marketing or digital marketing class. Mm -hmm. We had one class emerging media in the market and that's where you talked about websites and SEO and mobile marketing. It was all crunched into one class. Mm -hmm. um, but as new technologies came down the pike, I still had that broader strategic perspective. And when a new technology popped up, social media and different platforms, I, I was like, okay, this is just another tool and a different way to communicate yeah. to fit into the overall strategy. I think what you get in trouble with, with is if you just become an expert on one specific thing, mm -hmm. and if that thing goes away and there's a new thing, then you're, you're out of luck. But this program teaches you how the things will come and go, but you'll, you're like, oh, it's just this. It's focused on videos and, and dancing. Okay, well, how do we leverage that for our brand? And who's our target audience? I think that it's also like, I like to use the analogy, a cooking analogy, and that's funny because I can't cook and I'm going to kill it. <laughs> I try to do this for in real life. But uh, in the, you know, old marketing campaigns, we really only had a few channels that never changed. So we could learn how to work those channels and that was it. But really um, integration is more like a, a lot of the foundation of cooking, you know, you use the pans and the heat and all of that are the same, but the recipes change and we may have different components that we put in and those, those come in and out because we kind of have this foundation right. of these best practices, we're able to incorporate tools. I would, I would argue that in an integrated campaign, we're able to incorporate new technologies and new tools much more rapidly than in traditional marketing. So the things that we learned, I had a program in 2007 and the way to build an integrated campaign really hasn't changed. Right. Uh, the data that's informing it is better, but because it is such a recipe type of approach, we can put in all these different tools and things like that. I don't know if you guys agree with that analogy. Yeah, no, that's, totally. And that's what I was going to do. I feel you on that because that, <laughs> in the same way, you know, right? read a couple of blogs or ad week or something and I suddenly feel like oh my god I don't know anything <laughs> where, where am I I have not developed my you? NFT today I don't know what I'm going to do you know? um, but the, the thing is again it's about the concepts and, and you can chase after a lot of flashy new stuff mm -hmm. um, is it really going to do anything you know what you got to figure out what needle you're trying to move before you can move the needle um, mm -hmm. and how you're going to measure that and then what's really going to impact it mm -hmm. and it totally depends on your business some very traditional things are you're still very effective in certain businesses um, and sometimes they're not but if you understand those basic concepts and in in the introduction to data marketing program we actually use a textbook that was written in 2010 and i've looked for newer books and and there's none that that capture these same concepts as well so i always disclaim that to students and say don't get hung up on the fact that he uses an example about Sears or Circuit City or something. 
um, look at the concepts because things like ROI, customer lifetime value, measuring customer satisfaction, all these things are still very relevant. Um, and, and the companies and the examples may change, but, but if you get those concepts right, uh, then you figure out how to apply it to, to whatever you have today and use whatever new tools you have that hopefully make that even you know, easier to accomplish. And I wanted to add something that's really also unique about our program because I've talked to people in other programs at other universities and, and not to say that they aren't, I don't think they're as good, but you know, I <laughs> we might be biased. Yeah. But <laughs> also there's a focus in the IMC and the digital and the DMC on audience behavior, on audience insights and, and um, ethnography. And a lot of this is all about how to learn about your customer and having a very unique and narrow customer profile. And so those things don't change. Some of the tools that we might use to survey and things do change, but everything in marketing, especially as we get so much more personalized and we get to that, that holy grail of the audience of one that we're all talking about is about learning about that behavior that we now know because of data and we can right. follow people we used to make assumptions based on demographics now we actually know what they do right. and so this program really has a lot of focus on that and so once you have that everything else if you have the best practices as well falls into place Absolutely. but yeah i'm still reading i just learned about a <laughs> technology yesterday i was like what the heck is that but <laughs> that's part of the fun of being in marketing right and I also say, I think we learn from each other. I've learned a lot from my students. Right. Um, you know, a lot of my students are out doing things that I, I'm not done doing or haven't tried yet, or they're just more up to speed on something. Mm -hmm. And in our discussion forums, we're able to share a lot of that experience, right. um, or they just work in different companies and, and have different mm -hmm. um, experiences. So um, that's a big value too. It's not just a one-way thing, because if we were relying just on what I know, you're not going to get very far. So um, so it's really about opening up that discussion, and that's typically what comes back in the evaluations that we do, is that that's the most beneficial yeah. thing for students, is, mm -hmm. is those discussions where they get to talk to their, uh, to their peers and the instructor and, and any other resources we bring in. I think that's from a, a student perspective as well, Keith. Um, I feel that's something the program taught me to uh, really open up to and elevate, is that there are so many other things to learn constantly as a marketer that you can't ever stop learning. And I really had a better understanding of never stop learning and never stop implementing, like Bonnie said, all these different channels and keep going after them because that's where, that's where we stay relevant in marketing and that's where we continue to integrate everything through every single channel that we can get our hands on. So I think that's one of the biggest things our program does well as well, for as well. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you, Lynette. <laughs> All right, so um, if there aren't, I'm gonna give one last chance for any final questions to pop in the chat. Um, but one last thing I'm gonna ask just for a fun question. <laughs> um, and so, uh, what would you say is your favorite part about teaching for WVU and um, why WVU out of all universities? Because I love to ask that question. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of universities out there. So. All right, I'm going to start again. <laughs> um, my favorite part is the reason why I came to WVU in the first place, which is I really, um, thought I would be at a different university, to be completely honest, I applied at two places. And the, the people at the College of Media knew me by my first name by the time I started. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was joining a community of mm -hmm. people. And you touched on it too. It's, I, I love WVU because our alumni network is huge. Mm -hmm. Some of the people that we get, you have no idea. Yeah. You know, and I feel like I'm part of a really cool group of people that are really focused on integrated marketing and, and truly the, the true sense of the word, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. <laughs> and I like that too. So it's just, it's a constant learning environment for me as, a, as an instructor, as you said, with your students and everything. And, and this university does such a good job of kind of 
making everybody feel included and part of part of it part of a tight knit group. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say the you know because it's it's it was one of the first online programs and unique in that that it from the very beginning it drew diverse professors and diverse students from across the world really. So you didn't have this like cohort of people that come in and they have to move to a city. And so in your class, you're gonna have people that live all over the world literally and work for such vast, diverse companies. That brings an extra layer of richness to it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'll kind of echo what both of you said. You know, it's like I came for the degree and stayed for the community because yes. it's kind of, you know. Honestly, when I was looking, I was looking at online programs, um, and there's a lot of them out there. A lot of them from, you know, colleges you've never heard of. Um, what I liked was, you know, this is a real place. It's a real <laughs> university. There's real, um, you know, um, you know, academic rigor behind it all, um, and, and yet it is a, a program that's online. It's flexible. I, I've lived in three different states while I've been involved in this, so mm -hmm. you know you can you you know you don't have to be centered in one place, um, and and then you know being able to to move from being a student into being a part of the faculty has been really rewarding because you know you start to build that network of former students, of fellow faculty, um, having the chance to to share and, and and make those connections and just to be a lifelong learner and just to continue learning even after you're done and you get the degree. I think it's really important. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for taking some time out of the Integrate Conference <laughs> that we have going on here in Morgantown. I hope this was helpful. Oh, yes, absolutely. One more, um, <laughs> one more question. I can't say no. <laughs> I'll ask one more. Um, I'm not a huge numbers person. One of the reasons I haven't done more marketing education, math classes. Yeah. I've been fortunate to have a number, a numbers person to help me crunch data and help me paint the picture I want from the efforts I have done. Will there be help for those of us less math inclined? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you missed my setup where I, where I explained that I, I'm, I'm a, a terrible math phobic. I'm a pictures guy. I always, I always try to segment people by are you you know like the, the microsoft suite are you a, a word person an excel person or a powerpoint person i'm a powerpoint person mm -hmm. um but um but but even so you know i've been able to succeed you know for for this long anyway um without being a big math person and i don't think you have to be um where i think you have to and if you have somebody who can crunch numbers for you that's fantastic the real key is um, how do you take those numbers and, and derive some insight from that and then translate that into a communication strategy? Um, you know, my desk is full of reports or my computer or whatever. Um, and, and, and we're all just awash in numbers and data. Um, but there are very few people who can take that and say, okay, well, here's the, here's the point that matters um, and here's what we can do about it. And that's what I think our program, all of them to some degree, certainly the data program, uh, hopefully emphasizes is, um, is that connection, you know, from insight to action. Um, so don't be afraid of that. You, um, I mean, if you're going to be involved in business at any level, you have to have some comfortable, you know, appreciation of numbers. Um, but, you know, again, I, I can kind of do four functions and percentages and, and that's it. Um, and I think that that'll get you a long way. And we have so many tools now, templates and um, tools that do a lot of the, the heavy calculation for you anyway. Um, so I would not let that stop me at all. Um, hopefully we can give you some more comfort with that. So you're, so well, you're not so I'm, free. <laughs> I'm a creative guy, like, and when I was in the program, we are our, our one the one class we had to use SPSS, yeah. which is heavy data, and I made it through that class. So if I could do that, <laughs> you know, and, and we don't even use SPSS yeah. anymore. So it, you know, if I could do it, you could do it. Well, I'm an economics major with a math minor, oh. <laughs> and I love <laughs> SPSS. Oh, okay. And I okay. Never ever use any of that mm -hmm. in marketing, nor did I need any of that for the IMC program and, and the digital too. It's, um, 
it's really not about we already got to crunch the numbers unless that's the type of thing you're really into. Mm -hmm. It's about understanding the story the numbers are telling you. And anybody can do that if they're able to think at an abstract level and do critical thought, which is what the program teaches. Yes. So you'll probably always have number crunchers working for you and being able to kind of deduce what that what the end result of those numbers yeah, and that story yeah, that God it's telling awesome. you. But I I I didn't when who used SPSF? We never got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wow. I have to use it in the one class. I love it. Oh, yeah. that was the hardest class for me. Wow. But I made it. I passed it. Yeah. I never <laughs> use the skills now. So, Lynette, you're fine. <laughs> and hey, some of this is about stretching ourselves, too. You yeah. Know, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of why I picked the data program because I thought, you know, it's probably, you know, I, I've been at this a while, but I, I, I want to learn something, too. Right. Um, and, sure. and I did. Mm -hmm. And I will say, just to close um, our discussion today, from a, a, both a student perspective and um, as working for the program now, we really emphasize student support in all levels, mm -hmm. um, in all layers of your student progress and your student journey here. Um, you know, obviously there's myself as you're applying to the program, I'm here to support you, answer questions, um, help you through the application process. I sit on the admissions committee to get you into the program. And then once you're here with us, we have a full-time academic advisor on staff who is here to help you build your plan for graduation, to get you through to graduation um, and make sure she's very, she's absolutely very involved and um, very proactive. So if you have issues or if you need that extra support um, and you need that extra guidance, then she's gonna be there to support you. Uh, she meets with you every semester to make sure that you're still on track for that graduation plan that she put into place. And if you need to go down in hours or take less, or maybe you're more comfortable than you assumed and you wanna take more, that's what she's there for. Um, and then of course, success and support all the way through to the alumni stage because our alumni network is now over 2000 and all over the world, which is very exciting. Um, so please feel, don't, um, don't hesitate to reach out any, any part of your process because um, we truly are here for you and we really, um, really just want you all to feel that as a student, regardless of what part of the phase that you're in. So once again, thank you all for taking this time to you know, talk with our, our potential students and hopefully, you know, if, if you are watching this afterwards, if you do have any additional questions, please don't feel free or please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, and we just are very excited and, and hope to have you all soon in the um, online read graduate program. So thank you all again.